Hello and welcome to the newest Flying Kayak Flying Facts video. In today's video, we are going to look at bush planes and bush flying. Bush flying has always had a great fascination for me. I think it's incredible that you can land airplanes, as we all know and love them, on short strips, sometimes in places where there isn't even an official airport or anything you could remotely call a runway. Maybe it's just a long gravel strip or a riverbed, or a beach, where you could land an airplane. And if you look at bush flying videos or search up common bush planes, you'll notice one thing very quickly. Most bush planes, I put in a few examples, like the Piper J3 Cub, or the DHC Turbo Otter, are tail dragger aircraft. And of course, a lot of old airplanes, like for example the Spitfire, are also tail dragger aircraft which means that basically they have two big main wheels up front and a small tail wheel in the back. So I asked myself the question, why are so many bush planes actually tail draggers and not nose gear airplanes like airliners? And well, that question was actually pretty simple to answer, which I'm going to present to you in the following video. Oh, and of course, there's always that one weird exception to the rule, being the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan, a very successful bush plane in a normal nose gear configuration, shown here for reference. All right, but back to the topic. Why exactly are tail draggers more common in bush planes and old airplanes? Well, that has quite a set of reasons. As a bush pilot, most of the time you'll be flying, you'll be flying into places without runways that might not be paved, so you're probably going to have to cover some rough terrain, such as rocks or rough landing strips or maybe even logs and smaller debris in the landing area. In order to do that, you need a very, very sturdy landing gear. Tail draggers mostly have more sturdy landing gear. This is because a nose gear is long and it has a lot of moving parts which creates a long motion arm for a lot of force to work on the nose gear and a lot of fragile moving parts, which can fail and break. This means that nose gears are more prone to failing than tail wheels, which are just small and don't need that many moving parts, making them a bit more failure safe. Also, in the event of a nose gear failure, you'll not be able to take off because your airplane's now lying on its nose. In the event of tail wheel failure, you can still take off. You'll just be really dragging your tail. Actually, some airplanes just don't have a tail wheel at all and instead use a small skid. And if that small skid fails, then you're going to be skidding on your belly, but that doesn't make a lot of difference, especially on soft runways. So yeah, tail draggers are fail safe and a lot more sturdy than nose wheel airplanes, which are both big benefits for bush flying. The next big plus for bush flying that tail wheels have is that they have increased prop clearance. Now, on a nose wheel airplane, your entire airplane is level even on the ground, which means that the propeller can come very, very close to said ground. If there's logs or small rocks in the way, sometimes your airplane could drive over those or taxi over those, but you're going to have a prop that's in the way, and if that prop strikes said rocks or logs or other debris or obstacles, you're going to have an issue, because then your prop might fail and break, and having the spinny thing up front break off of your airplane is always kind of not the best thing to happen, at least that's what I've heard. So yeah, tail draggers have increased prop clearance, allowing for rocks and logs on the landing area or in the takeoff area to be less of an issue. Also, if you're landing on a gravel strip, your prop's gonna suck up some gravel. And the further away from the gravel your prop is, the less gravel it's gonna suck up. So the higher your prop is, the better for the prop itself. And as we've already mentioned, the prop is kind of important for a propeller airplane, and that's why that thing really shouldn't fail. Another big plus that tail dragger airplanes have is that they are a little easier to fly slow. That has a very specific reason. As you can see, a tail dragger sits at an angle when it's on the ground. Now clever engineers have come up with making that angle just about the stall angle of attack of said airplane. 
That means that you will always know what your stall angle of attack is on the airplane in a straight level flight. But what it also means is that if you just get the tail low on takeoff, you're going to take off as soon as possible. Which is why you see a lot of airplanes in stall competitions, basically tailwheel airplanes, pushing their tail to the ground, getting right to that stall angle of attack, the minimal angle of attack that they need to fly, and then hopping off and into the air. Another thing that means is that you can do three-point landings. When all three wheels touch the ground at the same time, you'll be stalling at the exact moment of touchdown, which is obviously quite a good idea, because that means that you'll lose your lift immediately, your wheel brakes will become effective, and you'll have a much shorter landing and takeoff run, which is great especially for bush flying, as most of the runways in a bush environment aren't the longest runways to begin with. But if bush planes and tail draggers are so wonderfully great, why aren't all planes tail draggers? Why do us simulator pilots still deal with those ugly, stinking nose gear aircraft? Well, the answer for that is fairly simple. Tailwheel airplanes are great in the air. They also have less air resistance, by the way, which is another great plus, and they're wonderful at flying on gravel strips and in the bush. But on normal airstrips, nose gear has the definitive advantage. Why? Well, first off, you can see where you're going on the ground, and anyone who's driven a bicycle or a car or anything really around on the ground will notice pretty quickly that, well, not seeing where you're going can amount to a very big problem very soon. But there's a few other advantages. Tailwheel jets, for some reason, never quite seem to work. When jet aircraft first came around towards the end of World War II, quite a few people tried tailwheel jets. But due to the high power of the engines and their stream being directed slightly downward in a tailwheel configuration, a lot of jets were incredibly difficult to handle on landing, takeoff, and on the ground, making tailwheel configuration is not really optimal and in some cases not even quite feasible for operations with jets on the ground. Another big plus of the nose gear is ground stability. Tailwheel airplanes are very unstable on the ground. This is due to a bit of a weight and center of gravity configuration issue that I don't want to go into too much detail here, but tailwheel airplanes are very unstable, leading to things like ground loops happening fairly often. Nose wheel airplanes don't have that issue at all. Also, as you probably know from pushing shopping carts, aircraft with the front being steerable are much easier to steer on the ground than aircraft with the rear being steerable. All in all, that means that while tailwheel airplanes are great in the air and incredibly cool for short or rough landing terrain, Nose wheel airplanes have the definitive advantage on the ground and at airports with paved runways and taxiways and apron surfaces. So, what that means is that nose gear airplanes are probably better for most high performance and modern aircraft, which will not be operated in the bush a lot. And especially with retractable gear, nose gear is kind of the way to go. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my website where I will probably post, be posting an article alongside this video explaining a few of the tailwheel quirks on the ground a bit more in detail. And look forward to new videos on my channel, not only regarding tailwheel flying, but also some pretty cool X-Plane scenery coming up, and a few free aircraft packages for X-Plane 11. Look forward for that, and see you the next time. Safe travels, blue skies, and many happy landings.